I'm going to teach you how you can customize the Fop Creative Icon 2 for the way you sew. So we know that sewists out there have so many different choices and styles of sewing that they are accustomed to. And on this machine, you totally can set it up for what works best for you. Because what works for me might not work for everybody else. So I want to go into the settings menu. Now, this is the little gear up in the top right corner. Now, let me just show you something. If you touch anywhere on this purple edge and find yourself not being able to activate that, it's because your finger isn't all the way on the screen. So for example, if I kind of touch this half on and half off, it doesn't always touch. So just make sure you're always touching inside the activation points of the touch screen. So in the settings, look at the top. You do see there's sewing, embroidery, machine, Wi-Fi, my sewnet, the camera, and machine information. You'll also see a variety of orange check marks from what's been turned on and what has been turned off. You also have a side that has white colored writing and a side that's got orange colored writing. Look at the orange colors. It has what are called temporary settings. So things that you set up or turn on over here temporarily will uncheck itself or recheck itself when the machine is turned off. But if you are setting this up for the way you want it to always turn on and be set up for, do it on the default settings. So things will be remembered once you turn the machine off and back on each day. Now there's certain things that you might come in here for sewing and turn on or off. So for example, the automatic presser foot lift. If you don't want it to always lift when the needle stops in the down position, you can turn that off. There's places that automatically cut the thread after a stitch is done, a te technique is done, and so forth. And there's a whole section on the active stitch technology, helping out with your tension settings as you go from stitch to stitch. Notice it's the first one and it is on. Probably leave that on for most of what you're doing. There's a reason they've added it to the machine, but on a rare occasion, it is something that you can turn off. Free motion quilting options. Have the machine know which foot you are using, such as the ruler foot or the spring foot or the dynamic spring foot. You can set this and then tell the machine that that is the exact foot you're using and then it knows how to adjust the up and down part of the foot system. I do like to that when I go into ruler work, I'll have the ability to adjust this as necessary, up or down, kind of based on the rulers that I'm working on. Remember, if it's temporary, come over here and turn it on on the temporary side. All right, taking a look down, stitch with safety. So again, this will be remembered um, as you have your, it's just temporary. So this is when you are working with the straight stitch throw plate. Keep in mind that straight stitch throw plate is censored so the machine actually knows when that is on or off. Uh, as you're working with twin needles, which I do love in, for example, our FOF Stitching Cosmos online course, you can tell the machine which twin needle you are using. And I'm going to just zip back out because as you see it in use, you will actually see the stitch that you've selected. And here, let's go to a fun stitch in the twin needle uh, arrangement of how it's actually going to stitch. So when you do come in here, it's really kind of fun to see what's going to look like before you sew. So when you're done with a twin needle, just check the off button and it will return. Needle stopping in the up position or down position, you have control over that. So foot pressure, you can adjust how much that foot is coming down on your fabric. And you know, if you have something that's coming out a little wavy, even when you have the IDT or dual feed engaged, come down here and reduce that down a bit. So you can always come in and give it an extra reduction depending on your fabric and the outcome. Options for feed teeth. Now, if you have auto selected, which is the default setting, you will find that when you go into free motion, you go to sew a button on, or you go to the embroidery side of this machine, the feed dogs will automatically lower. So that's great. And 
Most of the time, now that I've had this option, I really haven't needed to go back in. But on a rare occasion, if you do need those feed dogs to go down or up on your own, you can come in and override the automatic settings. Tying off, you can go in and have the machine tie off at the beginning of the stitch, end of the stitch, or when and right before a thread cut. So again, try those features out and see if they're right for you. Let's zip over to the embroidery settings. Here you can see a lot of things based on foot or twin needle. Yes, you can use a twin needle in with your uh, embroidery. It is pretty awesome. Uh, thread cut options, you can turn thread cut scene off. Now, why would you want to do that? It's such a great feature. But sometimes when I have a lot of little tiny lettering, I like to have it not cut every time it jumps from letter to letter. Trust me, it just makes the back look 10 times better. So you'll hear us talking about that with some of our other videos. If you need to adjust the pressure foot height because you're embroidering on something super tall or thick, this will bring your embroidery foot up a bit so it will actually uh, not kind of scoosh across the fabric. Is that a word? Well, I'm going to call it a word where it, it's kind of sunk into the fabric. You can bring it up just a little bit. Review embroidery settings before you proceed. Actually, that's nice. Um, I do like that on. It's that screen that comes up before you embroider with all the settings that you've done. And look up here. We have the option to select the default hoop size. So you can pick which hoop it always starts with. So if you're always using like your favorite hoop and most of your designs are going into that size, you can go in and set it. The one that's our most popular at our store right now is the 240 by 150. A lot of Kimberbell designs fit in that. So you could actually have that kind of be that hoop size that starts. Machine settings, we've got language, time zone, a um, audio. Oh, we can turn the audio down on this one. Oh, sweet. So that means that if I don't want it to touch and click every time that I'm touching it, ah, I can turn that off. That's been good. Um, you can name your machine. You can have a lock screen. You can change it from millimeters to inches. Now, that's really not a great idea. You will, you can. Um, when you get to embroidery or even stitch length, it just looks weird because you're used to like 2.5 millimeters. And now it's a weird number that is probably not what you're expecting there. Um, I am going to turn this back on so it is what I'm used to here, uh, but you can come in and change the color themes. That's why my screen is a little lighter than yours, possibly. Um, canvas workspace customization here. We, I will need to check. That looks like something new. Wi-Fi settings. What's your Wi-Fi in your home? You can select it. The MySoNet. You can sign in and out of here. The camera. We can calibrate the camera at this point. And then also presser foot recognition. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on since I notice it's not on. And then that way, if the foot is not correctly on or not being identified, go ahead and come in and check this box. Machine information, this is your information like your serial number and which is your current firmware. If you need to, and I think I'm going to do this just to make sure I'm all the way back to kind of normal settings, you can clear all and you can kind of restore the machine back to its factory settings. So when you're done, when you have your features turned on that you like, I bet you're gonna love sitting down at this machine because it's all set up for the way you like to sew every time you turn it on.